Okay, we are recording. And uh, so, Sydney, uh, you're interested in learning Rolang, I hear. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, Rolang is a totally weird language. I mean, you know, you, you gotta, you know, it's gonna be different from anything else you've ever experienced. It's really weird. Okay. Cool. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, now uh, I'm. Uh, Uh, we're going to uh, uh, start out with uh, 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 Rolang, uh, and uh, uh, we're going to learn about the row calculus and how the language Rolang relates to a very simple mathematical formulation that uh, formalizes process orchestration. But the weird thing about it is it does everything at once. Okay. You know, it doesn't do things in a sequential order unless you force it to do so. Okay. Okay. But uh, we're going to start out um, with the uh, developer, the uh, RGov governance developer interface. Okay. And uh, normally we, we run this on our own local machine okay. when we're doing development. But we have a shared, uh, you know, the Archain Developer Cooperative is running this machine, robot.net where we run our common services and stuff. Okay. And we have an interface running here. It may not to be uh, up to date. Um, certainly at one point we'll show you how to update it or you know, how to update your own local host uh, instance. Okay, so, um, uh, so the match statement we see here, uh, is uh, this is sort of an empty process. Okay, if we go to check the balance on an account, we get the Roland code here to do that. And then we can connect your wallet and uh, it puts, fills in the amount. And what we can see is the match statement says, it uh, says, uh, uh, give this name to the to the uh, to match one argument in the match statement. So if there's one argument in the match statement, it'll assign the name my gov rev address to that value. And there, you know, there, there's no let x equal five in Rolang yet. It is defined as part of the language, but it doesn't exist yet. And that's a uh, let statement is really syntactic sugar on the match statement. Now, if we put a more complex pattern here, we might have different alternatives. So this would be more like a select. If it matches one argument, do this. If it matched two arguments, do that. If it had a string or the, the value 25, whatever, uh, uh, whatever. But we'll learn more about the match statement later. For now, it just assigns the name. Uh, it matches one argument and it assigns the name to a value, right? And then, um, the only things in Rolang are channels and processes. And a channel name can be, is a process that represents itself. The number five 
is a process that represents the number five. Okay, one of the innovations of the row calculus over pi calculus is it has the idea of names that are unforgeable. So we can make new names like return, which is an unforgeable name, which means that it's totally secure. It's totally private. Nobody can access it. It's local within the braces unless I share it. Now, if I share it with someone, I'm giving them the capability to use that name and access the value. Um, if we, let's go back to select an action here. Oops, doesn't go back, reload the page. Okay. So if I, Make a new, a new X. I um, uh, in. I give it a uh, context where the name X is available. Okay, now I can write a value to X. Add the exclamation point in row line is the way I write about X, right? Hello. And basically the only thing that I can do in Rolang is read and write messages. Oops, I need parentheses. Silly me. I'm not sure why, but I need parentheses. Um, and there's one special thing in, in, in our chain where the first name I introduce is the result of an explore operation. So if I explore this problem, syntax are end of file, line six. What did I do? It looks like I'm missing an end parentheses, an end brace. Why doesn't it do a new line? There we go. Obviously, our braces have to match. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we explore again. And we see we got hello. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. um, so um, uh, let's. Uh, create another value, uh, another name. And uh, we can send hello to Y. And we explore. And then we get nothing. <laughs> OK. Nobody read Y. <laughs> um, so besides writing, the other thing Rolex, of course, is read. We can read it. We can read a channel. So let's let's read it. And we basically do uh, uh, do a uh, 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 use a wait for, which is a four. The four is not a loop. Everybody calls it a loop, but it's not a loop. Four is a wait for. So we introduce a name, Z is what we're going to bind the value we read from y. And then we're going to do some code. So when 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 we when we match a pattern of one element in the channel y, it's going to trigger this Um, it's going to uh, trigger this code. And we can uh, say we can write to X. We can write 
uh, we can write uh, Z and we can use the concatenate operator to concatenate plus plus is concatenation in Rolang uh, world. Oops. Okay. And um, now we can execute this, but we'll get an error because line seven uh, syntax error. Why? Doesn't like why? Uh, why doesn't it like why? Well, okay. At the end of this brace, we did. We have no operator between the four and the right to y. And the only operator we have is the par. Run these two things in parallel. So it runs the four and the right at the same time. However, this is not going to be executed until something is written to y first. So we're forcing it actually to execute line seven before it executes line five. Does that make sense? Yep, yep, I think so. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it ridiculously simple? No. <laughs> no, no. <it's... laughs> but there's I, I, a, lot, a lot to learn. A lot to learn. I don't think I understood why before we did this for z to y, why didn't new x y produce y? Is that because x was not defined in any way? I don't understand the question. I mean, this created creates the unforgeable name y. Which, right. or we call it why it's an unforgeable name. Actually, we can't forge the name. Okay, but we can, we can, we can call it why for now. Sure, sure, sure. But when when it was just new x comma y in and then y hello, it didn't run. And is that because we were doing nothing with x? We were doing nothing with. Uh, no, it's because the first variable that we declare is the result. Uh, I see, I see. Okay, okay. Okay, so we, the only thing it's gonna output is the, if, if we write something to X, it's gonna output it. If we, write, if we write something to anything else, it's not gonna output it. I see. Thank you. Okay. Oops, we go still. Name variable Z, 413 is used in a process context at 512. Well, this is one of the foibles of Rolang in that we're using a name in a process context. And we always send processes. Okay. Hello, quote, is a process representing, you know, it doesn't reduce to anything. Okay. Um, if I put in par here, right to X, two plus two. Okay, two plus two reduces to, two plus two reduces to four. And then four is a process that redu is reduced as far as it can. Four is a four, period, right? Same thing with hello. Hello is a process that's reduced as far as it can be reduced. But we have to send a process and receive a name. We send a process to a name in Rolang. And here it says, oh, gee, we're sending a name to 
a name. We can't do that in Rolang. We have to send a process to a name. Well, we can cast a name as a process by putting a star in front of it. Okay, now, like the word hello, the unforgeable name Z represents itself, but is as a process. That's a bit confusion with Rolang uh, on our chain, actually. Um, there are uh, some uh, implementations of a subset of Rolang that don't give an error message. It's like doi, you wanted this to be a process, not a name. <laughs> but rolling and R-chain enforces it because it wants you to be aware of the difference between a name and a process. And that can take a long time to be comfortable with. Okay, so a variable Z used in a process context. It always means, oh, I forgot a star. Okay. Now we explore and we see if it works now. Aha! Now we can see that it got hello world. And uh, It got four because we output it to X. It's part of, uh, considered part of the result for an explore. Later we'll learn about the ploy, in which case every deploy onto the blockchain. Explore doesn't change the blockchain at all. It does nothing on the blockchain. It just runs the Rowline code. Okay, but it can used, be used for read-only functions. Suppose I want to read a value on our chain, but I don't want to do anything with it. Like, I want to check my balance, but I don't want to pay to check my balance. <laughs> I don't want to put a block, another block on the chain to re check my balance, right? Okay, and be sure to chime in with questions here. I will, I will. So we learned two things. We learned the read and the write, and we also learned the match. Okay, we could have put in something like, uh, uh, we could have put hello here. And we could have put message here. And we could have put in message here, except I'm going to get an error. I didn't get an error. I bound the name. Okay, I bound the, I, I bound the, <laughs> this, I confused myself here. <laughs> okay, because message is matched against the process, hello, message is a process, not a name. Okay, and I can do, I could, I could do, uh, I could have put a star message here and that would give me a problem. Name variable message used in process context on seven. Well, by making a pro by saying that message uh, that I'm making a process for message, I'm making it a name. So now I have to put a star here. Because I made message a name rather than a process. Is that confusing enough? <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so. Um, so I'm going to leave it as a process for now and see that it works. So it's a way of forcing a name to be a process of, uh, a process or a name. If that, I don't know. Uh, probably we should say message is an identifier that can be represent either a process or a name. Sure, sure. It's confusing when I call it a name. <laughs> it's an identifier for the for the process. Hello. Mm -hmm. If I put mm -hmm. if I put if I put a star here, then message is an ident identifier for the name of the process. Hello. Mm -hmm. That's is an identifier. That's, a, uh, I think, a good distinction to make. OK, so yeah. that's Rolang. Now you pretty much know Rolang. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. Let's, look at, let's look at an example. Uh, let's see. We can look at the Towers of Hanoi. You familiar with that? Uh, I don't believe so. You don't? No, no, I'm not. Hey, we're not recording. I don't believe oh, yeah. it. Yeah, we are. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so, uh, the Towers of Hanoi. Ah, yes, it, yes, yes. Yeah. Has uh, uh, some number of disks, with a smaller disk always on top of a bigger disk. And the idea is to is to move uh, the all the disks from the left peg to the right peg using the middle peg as intermediate storage so that you never have to put a larger disk on a smaller disk. Okay. Okay. And uh So if we um, if we look at doing that in Rolang, okay, uh, we first we make a new variable result, which is where we're going to get our output down here. So we're going to send to the identifier result, which is a name. We're going to send uh, any output that we want to see in our result. Right. And the result is going to be something like this. It's going to be instructions on move the top this from the left to the right, blah, 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 until all the disks are moved to the end post in the biggest one on the bottom. Right? Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, standard out, we don't really need to get into. This is a way we can write to the node log. Okay, and we can look at the log later. When you're running your own R node, you're going to want to look at the log. Uh, you can see the log on robot. We have a URL for that. But um, um, Usually, you don't need to look at the Rolang log. It's only okay. in case of some problems and debugging and things that you might want to look at the log. And this is called the power box function because this is outside of Rolang. We're not sending and receiving a message inside Rolang. We're actually sending a message outside of Rolang. OK, we're not sending. I mean, standard out represents a channel that's not an R an R node, uh, uh, not not a a formal row calculus channel. Does 
Did I confuse you there? Mm, no, I think I understand that. You're just the saying power, that this, power this bar just... function. There's a way of connecting to the outside world. Right, 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 right. And it's also used to access, you know, internal R chain, R node things like blocks and things on the chain because they're not really part of Rolang. They're part right, of right. R chain, but they're not part of Rolang. Right. Um, so that's, you know, that we're using, we create the identifier standard out to write to the lock. Okay. Okay, and then we create uh, several other names. And uh, uh, I guess as we go along, we need these different names. Now we're gonna create, uh, uh, we wanna do a move operation. We wanna move pegs, move disks from one peg to another. So we're going to uh, uh, send to the channel move uh, the height of the stack. And we see we have the height of the stack is three here. We could make it four, whatever. And when, then height, the identifier height becomes associated with uh, refers to the process four, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to move four from the left to the right using the center as an intermediate place. Okay. And when we're done, we're going to send an act, acknowledgement. Okay. Okay, that's because everything happens at once in Rolag. If we're going to have any order to things, we have to we have to enforce that by sending messages because that's the only thing we can do in Rolag is send messages. <laughs> okay. Uh, now I'm making a contract. Now a contract is something new that we haven't discussed before, but a contract is really syntactic sugar on a persistent read, uh, on a uh, wait for. Because we're, we're gonna have a wait for, and uh, the uh, wait for is going to wait for, uh, the height, A left uh, a height Um, uh, so we're introducing a new thing here. At sign from. Okay, and the at sign does the opposite of the star, of the asterisk. It says the name of the process from. And that's basically so I don't have to put an asterisk in front of from everywhere I use it as a value. So as a process. So the name, uh, uh, <clears throat> now I could have, without the uh, ampersand there, I could put the, the star in front of from everywhere it, I use it. Uh, at sign two. And uh, so I'm going to move something from 
a post to a post using another post as an intermediate holding spot. And uh, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, return an acknowledgement. ACK. And what is ACK? ACK is a name I introduce up here. It's a channel, unforgeable name. Okay, so when I receive this pattern, and what is the pattern? It's just five arguments. So I'm going to re when I when I'm going to wait for this pattern to be sent to this channel, which is move. Okay. So um, what did I do? Oh, so um, this for statement is equivalent, almost equivalent to this contract. The difference is this contract does a persistence. It doesn't just run the code one time when it gets this pattern. It runs this pattern every time. Every time we send five arguments to the channel move, it's going to run this code that follows in the curly braces. Okay, whereas the for statement here only reads it once. So if we if we send it if we send uh, something to move twice, it's not going to do it. Now this is actually a persistent read, which is greater than equal instead of greater than dash. If I make this an equal sign, that's persistent read. But nobody ever uses that. Whenever we do a persistent read, people use the syntactic sugar. They make it a contract. OK, so every time five arguments get sent to this move channel, this code is going to be executed. And this code is going to make another name, Act 1, so that it can sequence its own activities. And you know, sometimes we, we see when we need Act 1, we add the new, we add it to the new up above normally. We don't, you know, we may not think ahead enough to realize we need an act, act channel. So here we use a match statement with more than one alternative. We use it like a case statement. We're going to match the height. which is four against the process one. Well, it doesn't match because it's four, right? So we're going to have this second case here, which is underscore. Well, does it doesn't match an underscore. What is an underscore? Underscore matches any any pattern. Okay, and I could, and I don't care what the name is. I could have called this. Uh, I could have given this a name, like uh, like. Uh, Uh, 
uh, not one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I've bound the name not one to whatever the height is. Okay. Okay, so uh, since it's four, it's not one, and I'm going to do this case. And now I'm going to move three disks to the from. And the from is going to be the left. I'm going to move three disks from the left. to the other, which is the center. Uh, to the, to, right, I'm gonna move the pro, uh, three disks from the left to the center using the two as the intermediate host. And when it's done, it's gonna return act one. So uh, here I'm gonna wait for act one because in order for me to make the next move, I have to finish the first move. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And when I when I finish the first move, I moved three disks to the center. Then I'm going to move. one disk from the left to the right using the other as an intermediate. Okay, so <clears throat> I've moved the top, uh, so I've uncovered a larger disk on the left. And now I'm going to move that to the two uh, Okay, and then when it's done, it's going to write to act one. Now I have to be very careful using the same name for an act channel because I have to make sure that they're serialized. Otherwise, I'm gonna get some really weird bugs. Some people writing Rolang will never use the same name twice because they're not sure you know, uh, which thing's gonna get executed if more than one thing reads the same act channel or has the same return channel. Um, in this case, since we only get here when we've read act one, we know it's empty and we can use it again. And then again, when, when, we've, when, when we've moved the larger desk to the two, then we're gonna move height minus one from the other to the two. Using the from as the temporary. Okay, we move this off of the from, well, off of the left. Okay, and then when that's done, 
uh, we return a nil. An acknowledgement. Doesn't matter what we send to the acknowledge channel. <laughs> Okay, and okay, so uh, when we get down to one, the last disk that we're moving, okay, we, we first move four, three, two, one, but we're We say move the top, the top disk from the from to the two, and uh, and we we're sending to the log move the top disk from the from to the two. Now, what is log? Well, we, we introduced the log here. And we can see that we have a contract log down here, which creates a list of all the creates a list of all the uh, uh, of all the things that we logged. So we have a little utility at the end of this that logs. We probably didn't need to complex this so much. One of the things the log does is it makes sure that everything comes out in the same order. We serialize everything by, by adding to the list and prioritizing it so that we get we, we get the list in a, a correct order. And that be, can become a problem. Um, we can look at what, how that, what, if that changes. Um, so, uh, and then, uh, <coughs> and then uh, uh, we're done moving a disk. So when we get an act back that we've actually logged it, we send an act to a nil. And if we explore this, we can see the process. And uh, if we make this a little simpler, say we do two, height of two, move the top disk from left to center, move the top disk from left to right. So the smaller disk got moved to the center, the larger one got moved to the right. And then we move the top disk from the center to the right. And that moves two disks from the left to the right. Okay, and similarly, if we do three, whatever, we can uh, verify that this works correctly in terms of moving the whole stack from the left to the right using the center as an intermediate. But, you know, you'll notice some here, sometimes we use the right as the intermediate. in order to uncover the larger disk. Um, okay, let's simplify this a little bit and take out logs. Okay, what we did here was we wrote the list of 
Where did we write result? Oh, here. So when we received an act back from the move, we write the list to the result. That's kind of a little complicated. So let's just go right to the result here. So we're gonna write this directly to the result. Now the question I have in my mind is, are they gonna come out in the right order? If I don't use the log. And uh, the, uh, uh, okay, so we're never gonna get, Uh, so uh, the uh, we're not going to write two arguments to result. We're just going to write one argument. Although we can see what happens there. But we're never going to get act one back. Because we sending to result, nobody's going to ever write to act one. So we're going to simply have to acknowledge ourselves and do a nil. Oh, does that make sense? Okay, when it was done writing to the log, it would get back in Act 1, and then it would acknowledge that the move was complete. Act one. Uh, it looks like I messed up here. I'm uh. I, I hit a bug here. I'm going to do control A, control C. Delete. I'm going to paste it back in here. And hopefully, I don't know why they have all these parentheses. I make this act one. Okay, because I result. Okay. So we're not using the log, but so we're gonna always acknowledge this after we print a thing. And if we explore, we probably get an error. Act one on 11.9. Oh. Is it because you spelled act ACT rather than ACK? Yeah. And because I, I really sent it to the wrong thing. If we look here, we can see it sent it to act. Mm -hmm. OK, not to act one, because act one was never introduced. OK, so it, what happened is we, we got this unforgeable name here. We got to the output. It confuses things. That's because we, we don't need this anymore. We don't need to write the unforgeable name here of it. What? OK, so 
Now, if we do explore, we see we get move the moves here. Now let's let's do it for two <coughs> and explore. Top. Okay, left to center, left to right, center to right. Okay, we're always getting these in the same order. Thing is in Rolang, sometimes we have to be very, very careful to make sure we get things in the right order. And because we're getting an acknowledgement back each time here, I think we're pretty safe that these are always going to come out in the same order. However, oh, what today's Wednesday? Yeah. Okay, I have one o'clock, which is the uh, members' meeting. You can feel free to join. It's in this room, actually. <laughs> a, a member Zoom hangout. Um, so if I uh, go to the collab, I'm, I probably have this in a number of places. Uh, probably. Uh, have it in Roland testing. We have uh, ROCK. Should be in this channel, I guess, actually, now. In calling robot testing R. O C K. What? I don't have it. Paper. Well, let's look at paper more generally. And that doesn't give us anything. Um so we go to the, how do you spell scissors? Uh, S-C-I-Z-Z-O-R. S-C-I, I'm pretty sure it's Z-Z-O-R. Z-Z? Uh, oh no, I'm wrong. How do you spell uh, S-S-O-R. S C I S S O R. Okay. Let's look at this rock scissors paper example. Any questions about towers? No, I I I, I follow. Okay, so I make, uh, you, you're familiar with rock, paper, scissors, right? Yep. Okay, so I, I, there's a winner, which is the result. Because mm -hmm. when we explore the first variable is the result. And then we have Alice and Bob, who are the players. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have Alice send a rock paper and a scissors in parallel. Okay. But we send a rock, paper, and scissors to Alice in parallel. All right. And we do the same thing. We send a rock, paper, and scissors to Bob in parallel with sending the rock, paper, and scissors to Alice. They all happen at the same time. <laughs> okay. So now 
we have a bunch of wait fors here. We wait for a rock from Alice and a paper from Bob, and then we say, winner, Bob wins paper over rock, right? And we wait for uh, a rock from Alice and a scissors from Bob, and we say the winner is Alice wins rock beats scissors. You follow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we explore. We have Bob wins, scissors cuts paper. Bob wins, rock breaks paper. Bob wins, paper over rock. Oh, Bob always wins. Isn't he lucky? Mm -hmm. Let's play again. Oh, and now Alice always wins. <laughs> <laughs> Explore again. Oh, now Bob wins one, Alice wins one. So, now you know Rolang. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Um, now, if you on this page is the uh, uh, on this page is the learn learn Rolang by example, and let me uh, let me show you again. Learn Rolang by example here, okay. which you can go to and we can see things. And the, okay. next, the next time we're going to go through and make sure you understand each of these things. Cool. Sure. Okay. And the other basic thing, the basic thing is object capabilities, which is different about the way the security model works. I'm not sure this example is the best, but in any case, we'll cover it in a future work study. Okay. And uh, and and then I think after the second one, you'll be ready to uh, actually contribute to some development in Argov. We're working on a chat capability. Okay. And um, uh, there's. Something, you know, uh, it's uh, going to strain your brain a little bit to understand the Rolang of how that works. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the basic work is already done. So uh, it's uh, 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 making an interface to it is, uh, 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 is not quite as challenging. <laughs> <laughs> still, still challenging, and you, there's a lot to learn. But uh, cool. Uh, uh, so uh, we're uh, starting in this room in nine minutes. Now I'm going to take a nine-minute break. Okay. Uh, uh, any final questions or anything? Um, no, I, I appreciate your time and, and your uh, explaining of Rolang. Uh, how do you so. how do you how do you feel about Rolang? Um, Oh, uh, well, I think I, well, you know, it's always a, I never know how long it'll take for me to start to look at a code and understand it and, and see what's going on. But I think I, I get it a lot more than I thought I would get it. So that's exciting. Um, um, well, you, you can always watch this video. And go through <laughs> <it again>. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> uh, but yeah, so far, so good. Awesome. Welcome aboard, and I, you know, I hope. Uh, Thanks so much. I hope uh, 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 you get lots of uh, 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 employment, and we uh, uh, we change the world uh, using Rolang. <laughs> uh, that'd be nice. I mean, nice. Looking forward to. It. <laughs> All right. Cool. Sydney, Sydney, great to meet you. And, yeah. Nice uh, to meet you as well. Right. Bye bye now. Until next time. Yeah.